All right, folks, we're going to get the next talk going. All right, next up, we have Gaining Control of the Sky and an in-depth drone security talk by Ryan Satterfield. Please give them a warm TorCon welcome. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for coming. My name is Ryan Satterfield, and I'm the founder of Planet Zuda, C or Planet Zuda. And today, the topic is drones and the need for greater security. And an incorrect, an incorrect critique on some of my research on drones is that people say they're just toys. Uh, and the reason I say that's inc inc incorrect is, well, I'd be inclined to agree if the military wasn't weaponizing one of my exploits and using it, uh, they say, against uh, no enemy drones, which is stupid because our enemies don't use these type of drones. Um, so, their gun works. Off, the military's gun works off a Raspberry Pi that open that locks onto open Wi-Fi and grabs the parrot's unique parrot drone identification and then knocks it out of the sky. It's a really simple Telnet to Wi-Fi knock uh, kill one to kill the init process. But I'm going to go far, far further than that. That's just what the media knows. I'm going all the way down to binary analysis today. So let's jump in. Let's jump in. Last time I gave this talk, special operation teams were testing out the parrot drone for military operations in 2013. Parrot drones were also tested by Czech University for surveillance capabilities. I also mentioned that it was in the news that the U.S. government purchased SenseFly drones acquired by Parrot. I have yet to test a SenseFly, but if you want to give one to me a test, I'd love that. And I give you the, I give a talk on it. So, a review of online catalogs shows SenseFly drones going from $9,000 to $20,000 used. Which, if that is the market price, it would be one of the higher priced so-called toys that I'm aware of. SenseFly is used to survey and analyze the land automatically and does not fall into any form of classification as a toy in my mind. It's important to note that there are plenty of drone business, business models outside of surveillance as well, including photography, and drone as an athletic jogging trainer, uh, and many, many more unique services. I'm gonna have to switch slides, sorry about that. Um, the NFL is now using drones to drop footballs into the game, which, if the drone is insecure, that could easily pose a threat to the players. All drones we tested have security vulnerabilities. We are going to take a look at one particular today, but we are not picking on that brand at all. The point here is that there are security issues that should be addressed either by industry self-regulation or, if necessary, legislation to be sure that the safety concerns are at least minimized beyond the level that they have been up to this point. As an example, let's look at the security of the Parrot AR Drone 2.0 and see how experts with other Parrot models also work on the AR Drone 2.0. I brought one. And I'm dumb enough to actually hook, up, hook in the battery, so if someone takes it over, they do. Just note that it doesn't actually fly. It's broken, so that's why I brought it. I'd like to note that everything I'm discussing has been reported to Parrot in the hope that they will take steps to address the issues and concerns. And it does not appear that they have taken effective steps to mitigate the threats. And last time we checked, they are drone and other drones. Hopefully this presentation has some motivation for them. So let's, security doesn't seem to be a top priority to, um, to vendors, to most vendors. This is concerning since Parrot sells a lot of drones, including the SenseFly, to the government. As tested three days ago, the Telnet to root exploit that was publicly displayed at DEF CON 23 still has not been properly fixed and can still be exploited, hence explaining why the military is using it in their so-called cyber gun. 
Hey, I didn't name it, they did. So, Parrot uses Telnet with no authentication, open Wi-Fi, non-FTP, and more issues. This particular drone creates its own Wi-Fi access point, which anyone can access by default, allowing any user to access the drone and then simply kill the init process with typing kill one, among many other things. You may, some people, one or two people in this room may be aware that there was some controversy created when I demonstrated this at DEF CON 23 in front of a bunch of reporters because they thought it was too, too simple. I wanted to show a drone hack so ridiculously simple that anyone could pull it off and it didn't take long to find it at all because these drones aren't secure and they're selling them everywhere. We need to secure what we're putting in the sky or we're going to end up regretting it and someone may get badly hurt. And that's not something I want. So let's go back down. All right, so I also identified that they use anonymous FTP and instructions on their site directing their users as how to use anonymous FTP for updating their software, which we'll, which we'll get into more later. It's important to note that they don't use the default FTP port. Instead, they use port 5551. Michael Robinson demonstrated this on a Parrot Bebop drone at DEF CON 23 and a day after my demonstration. So I decided to verify if it worked on the Parrot AR drone 2.0, and it does. It's even more concerning that Parrot has guides to help users access the FTP. This doesn't appear to be an accidental oversight. Rather, this seems to be a flaw by design. And I'll get into why this exists later in the talk. Shortly after DEF CON, you can no longer access Telnet when the drone has pairing on, which is a feature you can enable in their app, but it isn't on by default. The app for, their dr for the drone comes with pairing turned off by default, thus allowing anyone to access the telnet with no authentication while the drones are flying. There's a paper from 2013 that says if you have pairing on, you can't access telnet. Oh, sorry, that's too early. Um, but when I tested it in 2015, that was no longer the case, and every time I've demonstrated this attack vector, I've had pairing uh, on. So, Parrot did a security patch. So how effective was the security patch? After Parrot did their security patch, I was handed a new Parrot drone I've never seen before in my life and asked to hack it for a documentary with a camera in my face. To the credit of Parrot, for newer models, the Telnet to root issue does not exist. However, Telnet is still there, but it's supposed to be inaccessible. So I have this camera in my face and I have little to no time to come up with an exploit. So I repeatedly sent requests to the Telnet port on the new Bebop drone I was handed with the old information that would have worked for half an hour manually because I had an idea of just what I could do and didn't have an automated script to auto send the request and repeat. So what happened after trying to connect for half an hour? I completely disconnected the drone from the phone by potentially overflowing the Telnet stack. Another issue one might use is a simple denial of service against a drone. However, when you DDoS a drone, it recovers connection to the drone operator within 30 seconds, which is a good security feature, I guess. So when I potentially overflowed the Telnet stack, it was a complete disconnect. So the drone is flying anywhere it went and wanted in the sky, and we could go anywhere and there's no way to restore control. So this led to some good television, taking two extremely tall men, jumping into the air and knocking the drone down. So you can watch this video in German. I'll post the link. Um, but uh, while Parrot solved one problem, their newer drones, they created a new one. And unfortunately, that does happen. Parrot did send out a patch to certain drone models which looked like an attempt to stop people connecting from um, Telnet to, to BusyBox, how, where you can just, just shut down the drone. 
However, the patch was so buggy, it wasn't even a mild irritant. It, it, it was, and most importantly to this talk, the update did not go to the Terra AR Drone 2.0. So it wasn't, it, it, did they fix accessing the anonymous FTP? Nah, they didn't. And what purpose does the FTP serve besides annoying people and potentially distributing malware? It seems that this is where all recordings on the drone are stored. So, it doesn't take much imagination what one could do with an open FTP port where you're supposed to upload videos that allegedly actually took place. Oh boy, all sorts of stuff could take place. Of course, video footage taken by drones is not more easily authenticated for legal purposes than any other video, so should not be trusted any more than in any other video recording, nor should it be able to be used in court because anyone in the area could have changed what really happened, which I'll discuss more later in this talk. With a drone frenzy currently going on in the media, this fact seems to be getting left behind. So, how many operating systems does a parrot use and what versions? Our uh, last time we tested the Parrot AR drone, it used an, an embedded configurable operating system, Linux and BusyBox, which some consider to be a real-time operating system. Uh, I want to give kudos to John Staffordshire, also known as Geek Speed, for discovering the embedded configurable OOS, which I'll get into more later in the talk on how he discovered that. Um, I, when I was testing this in late 2015, I identified the Parrot AROS was Linux, so I became curious what version of the Linux kernel the Parrot drone was using. And lo and behold, they were using 2.6.32.9, which by default has plenty of exploits, some remote exploits, but some do need local access. Now why at the time, in 2015, and 20, the late 2015, were they using a Linux kernel that is no longer supported and had reached end of life? I honestly don't know the answer to that question. But I do know it was using 2.6.27.49 in 2012, which I'll discuss why I know that in the next slide. Um, again, these issues have already been reported to Parrot, but our knowledge is that they have yet to be repaired. Our hope is that this talk and other talks will inspire Parrot to and make their drones more secure for the, the mass consumers. So, the 2.6.32 version of Linux has 200 exploits listed on CVE details. However, I don't know why many of those affected version 2.6.232.9, nor do I know if Pear has done any updates to their kernel. Let's give end users a binary and tell them to use FTP. Brilliant idea. It is difficult to believe, but the company in particular actually built a web page to distribute the binary file along with a rather well-written guide telling their users to use their insecure FTP and to upload the binary and how to do an update. Seriously, most people don't even know what FTP is, let alone know how to use it to upload a binary file. Any company that expects a normal person to download a file, FTP into their drone, upload the file, and follow the rest of the instructions of never try to talk to normal people about code or FTP. If you don't believe me, once when I was talking about PHP, someone thought I was talking about a girl. I mean, are you kidding me? So yeah, we got that. This is not a good way to address a major security flaw. So what's in this binary? Well, when it was examined in 2015, we found some very interesting things, and I put the links there on the paste bin, which you can review it for yourself. John, John, aka Geek Speed, volunteered to take a look at it since he's good at firmware, and discovered that the binary is making changes to the kernel, and also made a discovery that there's an embedded configurable OS using a real time operating system. Another unique thing that Geek Speed pointed out is the fact that Parrot is making some changes to the kernel in the binary update file, and I repeated myself twice. Oh well. 
Um, the binary is from 2012 and was using the Linux kernel 2.6.27.49, which is why I was able to talk about that kernel in the last slide. They're doing a few things, but it's arguably not enough and is too slow to make a significant difference to secure their drones. At least they are drawn 2.0. I can't speak for all their drones. In the wild drone hacks. In 2013, NATO's Cooperative Cyber Defense of Excellence gave a talk on a paper called The Vulnerability of UAVs to Cyber Attacks An Approach to the Risk Assessment by Kim Hartman and Christo Christoph Stoop. It was a very good paper, and this paper goes into detail of different ways that government drones have been hacked and how to potentially hack at Sentinel drones, Reaper drones, Predator drones, and for some reason on the list was the Para AR drone. I'm not privy as to why NATO made this talk and paper pub publicly available, and even went so far as stating that it can be reused for nonprofit or non-commercial uses, but since they did, I'm referencing it here today. And the only Papers they mentioned about AR drones is that an Occupy protester used the drone to, mo to watch the police and that the Czech Republic Technical University has written papers on the AR drone, including as a platform for a robotic research and education. They didn't reference a paper by the Czech Republic titled Planning for Surveillance Uses. However, that's a very Im important paper. The air, the air drone wasn't the main focus of the paper, rather how to hack the Sentinel and a smaller focus, the Reaper, was the main focus. The reason for the focus on the Sentinel is because Iran claims to have captured one that the CIA used in 2011, which I think everyone knows. Does everyone know that's what happened with the uh, drone that Iran captured? All right, so I, I don't have to go over that. But anyways, they came up with a few theories that either it was GPS spoofing that pushed the drone into their Iranian territory, or even worse, in my opinion, there was a software glitch, which is their, which is their theory, that made the drone just crash in Iranian territory. So, um, either way, that's not good. And it, the, the way that the attack took place was just a $26 program called Skybuster, if they wanted to do so. Um, wait, uh, let me make sure I'm on the right. Yeah, I'm still on the perfect. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. And then that was um, a predator drone in 2009 by Iraqi insurgents allowed them to obtain live video by using a $26 program called Skybuster. I'd like to correct myself. This occurred due to not having their communication link encrypted, similar to how the AR drone doesn't use secure FTP for what appears to be used for video recording. Instead, it uses FTP, which should allow for a similar attack to occur. I would hope the pair drone wouldn't be used for anything sensitive by anyone. So what can we do? So we now know that many of these drone systems are extremely vulnerable. What can we do about these issues? Well, certainly, regulation might be of assistance. For example, if the FAA used FAA Part 23, which applies to airline security already, and used it as a model for drone security and added it in a, an amendment requiring security to be enforced, then we would have some really well-written rules that we already know work well. I don't know if that will happen or not. An even better idea, a far, far better idea, is self-regulation. Drone associations already exist, and we are considering issuing our own recommended compliance protocol for our clients. Through industry self-regulation, perhaps we can avoid the need for overabundance of legislation. Um, so... My team at Plant Zuda intends to continue examining and reporting on, upon as many drones we can get our hands on to analyze from a security perspective and will continue to bring issues to the attention of manufacturers. Overall, drones are somewhat safe, and I'm not discouraging the use of drones at all. I'm pro-drone, actually. I like drone companies, and I've talked to them, and I, 
I would invest in some if they're good, but I simply want to do what I can to help make our industry safe for the public. Does anyone have any questions? If I don't see your hand, just speak up. Yes? It was. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes? You know, I would, ha to be, uh, since I'm on the record, I want to be absolutely correct, and so I can't comment on that right now, but I would have to look into it. But it, thank you for bringing that up. I will look into it and talk to you afterwards. Any other questions? Oh my gosh, you're, uh, uh, let's see. Approximately nine. Over six thousand dollars worth of drones. Yes. The Sinsfly. I'm serious. If anyone wants to crowdfund Sinsfly and hack it, I would I would do the re I would do the research on it for free and present it. Interesting question that would take more thought than it takes time to answer the question. Any more questions? Oh, awesome. <laughs> Thanks for coming and go hack the planet.